Welcome to Numerical Methods. I would like to make a small session on the refinement of the time discretization. Actually, uh, in practical application, mm, this does not happen very often. Yeah, So often you choose the time discretization quite right yeah, from the beginning. And there is sometimes or rarely need to refine this. There are some cases where this uh, may be necessary. Yeah. So a case where this could be relevant is that you have created a model and your model is created on some coarse time discretization. But now you should value a financial product and say, for example, the financial product is an Asian option that observes the quantity daily, but your model simulates, say, in monthly or even quarterly steps. So what you like to have is some refinement of the time discretization and refine your model inside. Yeah, your model, if your model goes like an Euler scheme, the Euler scheme will start at a certain point and then it jumps to some endpoint. So the endpoint is maybe here. So how does the model evolve? Well, you can just make an Euler scheme that is starting at this point okay, and evolve. Starting at this point for the Euler scheme is easy. It's just this initial value plus the step. But now the difficult part is, I would like to have an Euler scheme that simulates the stochastic path conditional to, I already know the endpoint. So how does the Brownian motion and then the Euler scheme look like if you start at a given point and you also have a condition that you should end at some given endpoint for the next time step. So this is what I would like to discuss with you, the refinement of the time discretization. So situation is that we have given realizations and these given realizations are already generated on some coarser time discretization. And I would like to simulate now the stochastic process at intermediate times. I will just discuss this for the Brownian motion because then you can construct the corresponding Euler scheme in between. Yeah, This is quite straightforward. And the corresponding Brownian motion that is performing this, this is called the Brownian bridge because it is bridging from a given start value. Yeah, Brownian motion with a given start value is easy, just at the start value, but it's bridging to a prescribed end value. I assume that we have a time discretization given my course time discretization, T0 to Tn. And we know that we can then easily generate our Brownian motion. Okay, just starting in T0, say W of T0 is zero. And then we have independent increments. These independent increments are normal distributed random variables with mean zero and standard deviation is the square root of the time step size. So you have the square root of the time step size here. This is the time step size of my course time discretization. Yeah, I'm interested in the Brownian which, so this is actually, I'm interested in the random variable W of S, which is the Brownian motion. So this here is time. I start in zero. I end, say, in little t. And I'm interested in how does the Brownian motion look at an intermediate point, W of S, conditional that... I know the endpoint. So for a fixed sample path omega, for example, this here is my W at little t and omega. I started maybe here. 
This is my W of zero, say it is zero. This is my Y. I would like to end there. And how does now the random variable W of S, conditional that I know the endpoint, look like? Yeah, why random variable? Okay, there are now many sample paths of the Brownian motion that connect these two points. Yeah, So this sample path would go there. Yeah? This sample path would go there and so on. There are now many sample paths. Of course, the Brownian motion also has, say, a sample path that does not end there. Yeah, but this sample pass is excluded. Yeah? This is not in our interest. So I would like to know the sample path that connects the two points. This is my Brownian bridge. And I'm interested now in the distribution of the random variable W of S, W of S, conditional that at the final time I reach the point Y. So the Lemma here states that this random variable has the following distribution. It is a normal distributed random variable. So there's the set here. Set is a standard normal distributed random variable with the mean being just the linear connection of the two points. So this is S divided by T times Y. Yeah? So this is starting in zero and ending in Y. This is just the linear connection. So this here is the mean. And the standard deviation is square root of T minus S times S divided by T. Okay, that looks a little bit complicated. So you see that, yeah, you have a T a minus S and you have also an S. So it is a little bit as if you have an order of S squared, square root, yeah? So it goes linear you know, to the middle, but then it also declines again, yeah? So this is here your standard deviation, yeah? So actually you see if you plug in S equals zero, it's zero. If you plug in S equals little t, it's also zero and in between, yeah, it opens up and it goes down. So this is the result we need to prove. Uh, and then we const can construct the Brownian bridge. Yeah, then we just sample another random number for the set and we can sample in between points. Uh, and we can sample also in between sample paths if we just repeat this procedure for different steps. Yeah, Just bridging smaller and smaller intervals, yeah, for example. Let's prove this. So first note, yeah, what is the density of this random variable x conditional that y is equal to little y, yeah, if x and y, so the vector has density phi x y and if y the condition has density phi y yeah the density of this conditional random variable is just the density of x and y divided by the density of y yeah, okay, so you can also just bring the density of y to the other side. Yeah, then you see this is just writing our two-dimensional integral by first conditioning in, on y and then integrating over y yeah, as an iterative one-dimensional integral. So um, general result here, if you have now a multivariate normal distribution, x and y. So this is now multivariate normal distribution. So my mean is now the vector. It's mu x and mu y. And my covariance is now a matrix. So I have the sigma x, the variance of x. I have the sigma y, the variance of y. And I have the 
two covariance terms, the sigma xy, sigma yx. Yeah? So these are the variances and covariances of these random variables. So using now the result here on the densities, yeah, you can show that x conditional to y being y is normal distributed. And the mean of the normal distribution is the mean of x plus y minus the mean of y multiplied with sigma y inverse. Yeah? So if it is would be just one dimensional, so this vector is then two dimensional, it would be one divided by sigma y squared multiplied with the covariance. Yeah? So in that case, sigma x, sigma y, o x y. And yeah, the variance is the variance of x and also minus a transformation of the variance of y using the covariance of x and y. Okay, so you can show this using here this result with the densities. And yeah, if you have this result, now let's just calculate these um, expressions. So your random variable x is the w of s. So I would like to know w of x, s conditional that the w of t at the later point has a certain value, little y. And you know that the w of t is w of s plus the Brownian increment. And these two guys here are independent. Yeah, we have independent increments. So from that, we have that the variance of S, this is just my Brownian motion. This is just S. The variance of T, this is just T. The covariance of W of S and W of T. Yeah, this is the covariance of W of S. S and W of S. This is just the variance. This is again just the S. And the covariance of W of S and the increment is zero. Yeah, plug this in into this formula here, yeah, 22, and you get the expression that we have in the lemma. So I now know the distribution of W of S conditional to w of t having a specific value. So maybe this should be a little bit more precise here. And equals equals y. So now if you would like to, to write this down, yeah, uh, you start, say, with your course time discretization T0 to Tn, you do a refinement. So from Ti to Ti plus one, I now have a refinement Tij. These are the finer time discretizations. Yeah. Then you see that you can just write this as the linear interpolation between starting value and end value. So this is the end value where you would like to go, plus some plus some normal distributed random variable multiplied with the corresponding yeah, scaling that gives me the correct uh, variance. Okay, yeah, so you see it looks a little bit like a linear interpolation of the starting and the end random variable plus a normal distributed random number, but you have to use for this normal distributed random variable here the right expression for this variance factor. 
that creates here the right effect that we go up and then it closes down. Yeah? Okay, the, you can rewrite this formula yeah, a little bit uh, simpler so you really see yeah, that it is like an interpolation. Yeah, One minus alpha starting value plus alpha end value plus square root of one minus alpha and then another Brownian increment. Sometimes you also may create this by using su successive refinements. For example, you take the formula and you just have the formula for what, where would you sample a point that is in the middle, uh, in between. Okay, so you can look the formula. It's the one half starting point plus one half end point plus one half normal distributed um, random variable yeah, with the square root of the length of the interval. And then you can repeat this process yeah, for the individual uh, intervals. Yeah? So you can also do it uh, iteratively. Maybe I finish with a small look yeah, into an implementation. Actually, this implementation here uh, uses already a few classes that we will discuss in the next upcoming sessions when we talk about implementation. So here I use a given Brownian motion. And on that Brownian motion, I now define the Brownian bridge. Okay. And in this experiment here below, I plot the Brownian bridge for starting in one, ending in two for a finite time discretization. Yeah, as always, you find this in the uh, lecture repository. So let's have a look at this implementation. I will make use of a few classes that we will describe later, for example, the time discretization. So in our lecture repository, there is a package Monte Carlo Brownian motion, and there you find the Brownian bridge experiment. So I would like to plot um, a Brownian bridge with 100 sample paths, starting from a Brownian motion that has only two time steps. So the Brownian motion has a W of zero, W of one, and W of two. Yeah? So this is a W of zero, W of one, W of two, that we generate here with this Brownian motion. So I have a time discretization with two time steps, delta T is one, and yeah, maybe I just use here 10 sample paths. Um, so this generates now these three random variables. I take the random variable w of 1 and I take the random variable w of 2. So w of 1 is just the delta w of 0 and the w of 2 is just my, my, my w1 plus, so add the delta W1. So I generate two random variables, start and end. And now I would like to connect these two with a Brownian bridge. And the Brownian bridge should have finite time steps. So here, this argument is the number of refinements. So I would like to have now 100 time steps in between. So let's create now the bridge time discretization, a time discretization that starts in one, has 100 time steps, and each time step is one divided by 100. So uh, it's much finer. And then we create the Brownian bridge on this finer time discretization. Yeah, I will peek into this uh, next, and then I just plot the stochastic process. So maybe I just run this yeah, and you see that I am now connecting the different start values. So these are my 10 sample paths of the delta zero. I'm connecting them with sample paths that have the corresponding end value. 
So let's have a look at how the Brownian bridge is sampling these guys. Okay, so you see there's a constructor here that takes the finer time discretization and it takes the random variable from which I should start and where I should end. Okay, it calls then actually the other constructor here, which is this guy. And this guy is using, in addition, a Brownian motion, a Brownian motion to generate the sample path in between. So a Brownian motion is here the input. So this calls now the other constructor. And this Brownian motion that is the input is called the generator. So actually we have these arguments. There's a starting value, there's an end value, and I have in between a Brownian motion that should be used to connect start and end value according to the Brownian bridge lemma. So here is how it is done. Yeah, okay, so this is not much code. Yeah. So you step forward in time, the current time, the next time, our interpolating factor. So this is exactly the formula which we have here. Yeah. The interpolating factor is just the current time step of the refinement divided by the total remaining time. Yeah. So we are refining the interval from the current time to the end. Yeah. So it's the refined time step divided by the total remaining time. So this is next time minus current time divided by end time minus current time. And then I do this interpolation. The interpolation using the Brownian motion here. So this is my random variable z. And actually in this part, it's this part here multiplied with square root of 1 minus alpha. And then the just linear interpolation with the end value. So the end value is just the random variable where we will end. Okay, so that's just the formula from the script. Okay, and you see that this generates now Brownian motion sample passes conditional with to a start value. That's easy, just add something, but also conditional to a given end value. Okay, so that was actually my session on time discretization of stochastic processes. In the script, I have yeah, a few remarks now that relate to the implementation. Yeah, you have a number of sample times, a number of sample paths. I believe now if you uh, if we plug in uh, Monte Carlo simulation, yeah, we have both parts, number of sample times and number of sample paths. Uh, but I already made this comment on the section we had before, yeah, Monte Carlo simulation of time discrete uh, stochastic processes. So what you find here in the script is just a recapitulation yeah, that we now combine the two methods, time discretization and sampling of Monte Carlo paths. Yeah, let's conclude. You find here now two other references. Yeah, also uh, a lot of this stuff is from my book, yeah, but I never give my book as a reference. You find here also two uh, references more on the theoretical background. And in the next session, now I like to discuss with you implementation and actually we will now pour everything we did together. Yeah, Computer arithmetic, random number generation, Monte Carlo method, calculating the expectation, time discretization of stochastic process, Euler scheme, everything will be put together and we build a nice, clean, yeah, also lean implementation. That was it for today. Thanks.